This is the Tower of London. Today, it is a popular tourist attraction for visitors to England. But inside, they find a record of a time past which reveals a brutal history. This is where, centuries ago, enemies of the British state were brought to face torture. Often they died here, after being cut and literally torn apart by machines designed to maximize the suffering of their victims. In the present day, the British Parliament has claimed to be opposed to torture. Indeed, it condemns those countries which use these methods and calls for sanctions against them. But at the very heart of government, we have found evidence that ministers have in fact supported the transportation of detained suspects to other countries, where they have been subject to torture methods that are banned in the United Kingdom itself. Are the British public aware of this policy? How do they feel about it? Do they regard it as hypocritical that their leaders condemn human rights abuses by other countries but assist in exposing today's suspected enemies of the state to the very same techniques abroad? A simple question went onto the streets of London to find out whether 21st century Britons support or oppose methods which, officially at least, were closed down with the Tower of London. We began by asking which countries the public believed had been condemned by British politicians for human rights abuses. Uh, which countries do you think or have you heard of the UK criticising for their human rights abuses? Uh, I think the biggest one would probably be China. Uh, there's obviously in the news at the moment Syria, uh, Russia. Uh, not really into politics that much, so... No, okay. Wouldn't that be places like, I don't know, Syria or Korea and places like that? That's all I know. <laughs> Can you think of any countries the British government has criticised for their human rights abuses? Um, North Korea, Syria at the minute, maybe. Um, well, there's a lot of countries. I know that Russia are being bad at the minute with gay rights and stuff like that. Uh, I think Syria at the moment, quite obviously. Probably, I don't know, if, I'm sure I've heard China mentioned before, but um, not really off the top of my head, to be honest. Can you name any countries or think of countries the British government has criticised for their uh, human rights abuses? Um, uh, Afghanistan, Iraq, Syria. Um, I think those come to mind. Um, no, not really. Maybe China would be the only one. So... That's what the public said. We sought the views of our expert. Typically, the British will condemn a country for specific abuses of human rights, a specific act. They don't generally condemn an entire country as a human rights abuser. There have been accusations that countries like China, for example, have not extended human rights to the same degree that Britain would, but they don't condemn China at large. The United Kingdom will condemn countries uh, for human rights abuses which it primarily has no decent or good relations with. So it'll condemn Iran, it'll condemn Burma, it'll condemn uh, China, uh, but it won't condemn uh, countries like the United States of America and others who have been key in perpetrating uh, human rights abuses in places like uh, Guantanamo Bay, in Bagram, in Abu Ghraib, and in the plethora of secret detention sites. Uh, and ironically, the United Kingdom, although they will condemn some of the abuses in the Arab and Muslim world, uh, they, won't, they certainly didn't go uh, far enough uh, when they partnered off with some of these regimes in the war on terror uh, to render certain suspects to those countries when it suited them. It seems then that Britain has been ready to criticise other countries for their human rights record. But are the public aware of the UK's own participation in torture? We asked them if they had heard of a technical term related to this. It's called extraordinary rendition. Have you heard of extraordinary rendition and are you aware of what it is? Uh, no, I'm not. No, no I don't. I have no idea, no idea at all what that means. No, I've never heard of it. Do you know uh, what extraordinary rendition is and uh, you know what that's about? Yeah, it's when the, uh, the CIA used uh, charter flights to um, bring prisoners um, out of certain countries and drop them off in others and in the process they're, they're tortured by other governments, I think. Yeah. No, I've never heard of extraordinary rendition, no. No, no, I haven't heard of it. Uh, 
Uh, no, I've never heard of Extraordinary Rendition. Have you heard of uh, Extraordinary Rendition? And do, if so, do you know what it is? I've heard of it, but I don't recall it. I've heard it on the news uh, been mentioned, but I couldn't tell you what it is, no. I have no idea, to be fair. Nope, never heard of it at all. It's almost a, a kind of justification for torture. Clearly then, few members of the public have heard of Extraordinary Rendition, and even fewer could explain what it was. We turn to our experts for help. Extraordinary rendition is when an individual is removed from one country to another country without recourse to the normal intrastate extradition rules. Think of it as sort of a legalized kidnapping. I've always said that if you say extraordinary rendition fast enough and quick enough, it just becomes extradition. Um, the problem with that, of course, is that uh, extradition is a legal term and extraordinary rendition isn't. Extraordinary rendition um, isn't a rendition of uh, Beethoven's Fifth Sym Symphony. It is a, a kidnap, it is abduction, it is torture uh, to a place where you are held in arbitrary detention. It has been practiced by the United States of America and perfected by the United States of America. Even as we speak, there are cases of rendition in the Obama period that were supposed to have stopped because he said that he would no longer uh, allow torture. He said he would uh, close the CIA sites. But what we've seen is that people have been captured uh, without any legal representation and shipped off to the United States. Um, uh, and that's opposed to what used to happen in Bush's time, which was they were uh, captured and then shipped off to secret detention sites held either in the Arab and Muslim world or in places like Guantanamo, which were the ultimate destination. Having explained that extraordinary rendition meant the UK supported the flying of suspects to other countries where torture was allowed, we asked them how they felt about that. Did they support the UK's decision to carry out extraordinary rendition? And if not, why? Would you support the UK doing this extraordinary rendition, which basically means getting other countries to torture people because they're not allowed to do it here? Oh no, I wouldn't support it at all. Well, I... If, if, if they want evidence for crimes, then they should get it by the proper means of justice. It's completely inhumane and wrong. Um, if we have people in this country who have come in from another country and have done heinous, terrible crimes, then they should be taken back to their country, but not to be tortured, to be dealt with in a, in a, in a human rights way that is respectful to all people. Um, the torture of other people in, in the countries that they're native to, um, it shouldn't be allowed. It should have been stopped a long time ago. Uh, no, <laughs> not at all. I mean, it's wrong. It's basically, in a word, it's wrong. As soon as you, it's so easy to justify certain things like this, but as soon as you actually start getting to that ground, it's, while in the short term you can justify it, long term something happens to society, something happens to the very nature of the human that's involved in it. Would you support Britain using that methodology, so not being able to torture people under British law, exporting them to other countries and then uh, torturing them there basically, or having them tortured there? Oh, I don't think people should be tortured, no. Um, whether it's in the UK or outside of the UK. I'm completely against it, to be honest, but as far as I know, I, I didn't know the actual the government did that. Um, I know, I, I assume that you're probably talking about Guantum uh, Guantanamo Bay, um, and I assume that we were trying to get people out of there and, you know, sending them over there to be tortured. Um, so, I'm, I'm not a, a big fan of it, to be honest. No, that's terrible. <laughs> that's awful, yeah, it shouldn't, definitely shouldn't go on. I mean, yeah, you can kind of draw links between that and the States having Guantanamo Bay, and yeah, that's... Yeah, not good. Not only did the public generally oppose the UK's involvement in extraordinary rendition, many citizens found it hard to believe this was even taking place. Our experts shared their concerns. I would support it given the circumstances for what the individual was being rendered for. If, for example, it was Osama bin Laden, I would of course support Osama bin Laden being kidnapped, grabbed, renditioned back to the United States to stand trial. If it was someone, for example, who had committed speeding offenses in violation of the motor vehicle code and then fled the country, I would never accept extraordinary rendition under those circumstances. Extraordinary rendition uh, is a crime. If I was to do it to any individual, 
uh, I would be charged with kidnap, I would be charged with torture, I would be tar charged with uh, arbitrary uh, and false imprisonment. Uh, so if a government was to do it, it doesn't make that government exempt because everybody should be uh, accountable to the, to the law. So if my government is committing a crime, I would not and never would countenance supporting my government in committing that crime. Rather, I would point out that my government is committing a crime and make sure that people know that that's the case. We wanted to know what the public expected the position of their politicians to be on extraordinary rendition. Here's what they said. What would you want, you may, may or not, may not know what your MP feels about it, what would you want your MP's position to be on extraordinary rendition, which specifically is putting people on flights to get them tortured in other countries? If that's, if that's the end goal and it's meant to be secret, I, I would want to uh, first of all promote some kind of like, uh, expose it and then pass, um, maybe pass legislation to make it harder to protect people's rights or use, the, use existing laws that we have properly. Uh, not support them. Uh, it's Dan Jarvis, my MP in Barnsley, back home, and uh, I hope that he won't support it. I think, obviously, torture, I wouldn't say anywhere. Uh, yeah. I, I don't really know how to answer it, but torture is not good, so it shouldn't be done whatsoever. What do you think British politicians should do about it? Do they? I know this sounds almost a stupid question, yeah. but uh, do you think they should be supporting it or not? No, I think they shouldn't be supporting it. I mean, once the rule is followed within the country, that's the same standard uh, which should be applied outside of the country as well. So, yeah, no do double standards. We've been uh, through the... I mean, we don't want to repeat the bad side of the history. Well, they should abolish it, I think. It shouldn't, it shouldn't export people just to talk to them. Keep it all in England or, you know, if they're accused of a crime in another country, maybe then export them to the country they're accused of a crime. But shouldn't export them to another country just to get them tortured. I think that's that's horrible. I think they should do everything in their power to not export, you know, British citizens especially, and, and they should, you know, put them through the justice system and put a sentence to trial, you know, and, and give them what they deserve. And um, they shouldn't send them over abroad to be tortured, that's for sure. So, though one or two individuals could see rare circumstances where the moral issue was complex, Nobody, we asked, actively supported the use of extraordinary rendition. Our experts took a very strong line. Extraordinary rendition is an activity that the United States has engaged in. It is not an activity that the United Kingdom has engaged in. There is no legal precedent in the United Kingdom for acts analogous to extraordinary rendition. The British Parliament has not passed a law authorizing British government representatives to kidnap people from foreign countries so whether they support it or not is not germane it doesn't exist as an opportunity in the uk i don't believe that my local mp or any mp would um, knowingly say that they support torture form imprisonment and kidnap what they would do however is support the policy of their government which has been involved in or complicit with the united states in uh, torture, rendition and kidnap. For example, we know that the British government um, had ordered British intelli intelligence agents to go to Guantanamo and to Bagram and other places and to interrogate British prisoners held there by the Americans and that there weren't enough MPs in British Parliament to speak against the government's actions and to hold them to account. So in that sense, um, silence is tacit approval. This led us to a very clear and simple question. Could anyone see a difference between direct torture and extraordinary rendition? Do you think there's any difference between direct torture and taking people abroad and torturing them there instead? Um, no, I think that it, it tortures torture wherever it is really and I wouldn't want to support that. There's absolutely no difference at all is there? I mean it's, it's not to do with where it is, it's to do with the motive. And the very reason you shouldn't is because you, you, you believe it's wrong, uh, because every human has a, has a dignity. So whether you do it in this country or that country, I mean, you, you just, you're just fooling yourself. No, definitely not. I think it's exactly the same. They're just trying to avoid the issue, really. Do you think there's any difference between direct torture and taking people to another country to torture them? It doesn't matter, does it, where you are? If you're tortured, you're tortured. It doesn't matter what country it's done in. But if, we, if we're getting information like that, then something needs to be done about it. No. And I'll 
and 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 a lot of long-term people in the intelligence com, com, community don't actually like torture. They say, well, one 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 quote was that it's using physical harm on someone and torturing them for information doesn't get you the truth, it just gets you the fastest lie to stop the pain. Torturing in any way, way of torturing, seeing that is not right. So nobody could see any difference in terms of whether torture was conducted in the United Kingdom or abroad. Our experts agreed. Extraordinary rendition is the act of taking someone from a country and removing them to another country without resort to due process of law. Torture, direct torture, is a term that is very, very difficult to agree with. For example, what constitutes torture varies depending on each country. The British consider the requirement of a person to wear leg irons as torture. Other people have held that playing loud music is torture. Other people have held that light deprivation or dark deprivation is torture. So when we talk about direct torture, we have to be very specific as to what we mean. Torture is defined as many activities based on the country you're in, and they're all different. So there is no yes or no to direct torture. If direct torture is being defined as taking a red hot piece of steel and pressing it into someone's eye, of course that's horrible and I would never ever tolerate that. If torture is defined as shouting at someone during interrogation, well that's perfectly acceptable. Torture in itself, in and of itself, can be done uh, in or outside a, a, a position of, of being uh, uh, renditioned by a government. Uh, one person, for example, and many people have been uh, convicted of torturing others uh, as free people in the United Kingdom. So we've got cases of torture committed by individuals for, for no political reason, but for, for example, domestic violence issues. But when it's um, with extraordinary rendition, the first part that happens is that a government or its agents are involved in physically kidnapping an individual from where he lives or from where he resides and taking him to a place uh, without his choice uh, against his will and holding him there arbitrarily and then subjecting him to interrogations, to torture, to cruel, inhuman and degrading treatment, all without the presence of a lawyer and all in secret in order that they can always plausibly deny that any of those abuses ever took place. And nobody's a master of this more than the uh, governments that have been involved. There was one final question which we felt it was important to ask, and it was a moral one. Did the public feel that British ministers have been hypocritical when it comes to attacking other countries about human rights abuses, but supporting extraordinary rendition themselves? Do you feel there's anything hypocritical about criticising other countries' human rights abuses and then exporting people for torture? Absolutely. I think it sounds like a definition of hypocrisy. If you were to look up in a dictionary, that's the best example. It's completely hypocritical. Absolutely. It, we can't preach to other countries um, when we're doing it ourselves. We, we, it's completely hypocritical and wrong. It needs to be addressed and dealt with. I think, yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, I mean, there's lots of situations where it happens and why it happens, but yeah, definitely seems hypocritical. Do you feel there's any hypocrisy in the British government criticising other countries for their human rights abuse? and being involved in this extraordinary rendition thing? Um, I think it's a very complicated picture. Um, I don't know all of the details on that, um, but I think uh, we should lead by setting an example, definitely. Uh, yes. I mean, they're still torturing them, so that's very hypocritical indeed. I suppose it is hypocritical if we, we say that, um, but I wasn't aware that it was being done, to be honest. So um, I do watch the news occasionally, and so I didn't, I didn't know that was a, an issue. Well, it's, well, it sounds it sounds like complete hypocrisy. I mean, you can't support one way and then go the other, and yeah, you know, it sounds ridiculous. Our experts took the same view. I think the British, as a as a general rule of thumb, are very sensitive and very aware of human rights. Uh, one of the accusations that is levied against the British government, time and time again, is that the British tend to go overboard in protecting human rights. They don't, for example, allow people to be extradited without providing them with funds to 
fight their extradition. The British government, if the European Union, for example, or the Euro European Court of Human Rights says one thing, the British will augment that and increase it before they implement it here. The British are very, very, very sensitive to any hint of violation of human rights. I think there's no escaping the fact that um, it's like the pot calling the kettle black in many cases when the British government has spoken to other countries and said uh, that we would not regard your human rights uh, uh, record as one uh, that is desirable and that, one is, that we, can, we can support. Um, of course, Britain will always say that we were never physically directly involved in torture themselves. But what they will do and what they have done is used torture evidence or evidence that's been gleaned by torture of sub suspects in countries known to practice torture. And then they've used that in British courts under secret evidence to either convict individuals or to place upon them control orders or to place upon them um, terrorism measures or to restrict their movements or to um, uh, have them imprisonment, imprisoned on extradition or deportation orders. All of that we know has happened in secret courts where neither the victim or the person who is the defendant has the right to see the evidence against them nor does their lawyer. So we know that Britain has been involved in directly, uh, indirectly, in uh, using torture evidence. The press have been highly critical of British government over the cases of extraordinary rendition. They have exposed the weakness of attacking other countries for supporting torture, but of using the very same methods by flying suspects abroad to places such as Guantanamo Bay in Cuba. If Britain seeks to lecture other countries in the international community about human rights abuses, it must ensure its own behaviour is not hypocritical or visibly contradictory. After all, whatever the Tower of London tells us about the past, in the present, the UK can only expect to credibly enforce a single high standard for others if it does not display double standards of its own.